Welcome back to the PowerPoint tutorials. What I'd like to show you this time is how you can add animations to your PowerPoint presentation. I hate to sound like a broken record, but I want to start this by reminding you that animations should be used sparingly. They are used to grab the attention of your audience. Animations are super cool and you're going to want to use a lot of them and I do and I'm an adult and I know how to do this the right way. But what we want to do is grab our audience's attention. If we add an animation to every single item on our presentation, then nothing stands out. So you want to use these sparingly and you want to make really conscious choices about why you're choosing an animation for an object in your presentation. Alright, so now here's how you do it because you're going to ignore me anyway. So if we go to our title slide, excuse me, we're going to go up to the animations tab. And what's going to happen is you're going to have lots of different choices. So first thing that we can do is if we go to the transition to this slide group, the first thing that you can do is you can change the way that it flips from slide to slide. So what we can do if we expand this is we can preview what it will look like when it goes from slide to slide. You can apply one transition to your entire PowerPoint presentation or you can have a different one between each. And you will have fun checking all these out to see what they look like. So I'm just going to choose one at random that looks good to me. You can add a transition sound. Again, I want you to be careful about this. If you overdo it, your audience isn't going to remember the important parts of your presentation. But you can add that in. If you use these well, like a drum roll, it'll actually add to your presentation. And then what you can do is you can change the transition speed. So you can make it slow, medium, or fast. Oop, you make it slow, medium, or fast. I don't know if you could hear me over the drum roll. So that it changes how quickly you move through your presentation. And then finally, I can apply this to all. But before I do that, I'm going to say no sound. So we're going to apply to all so that every time I move through between my slides, I get that same um, presentation. The last thing is how you're going to advance the slide. So you can set a timer so that this automatically goes through. You're only going to do that if you're really going to practice your presentation and you know exactly how long you're going to spend on it. Otherwise, you want to leave on mouse click selected so that when you click the mouse, your PowerPoint presentation will move from the first slide to the second and so on. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to select an item on our page. So I'm going to select my title. Notice now my animation group is open and I can actually use it. So what we can do is animate. So if I come down here, I can have it fade. Notice how it fades in. I can wipe. It'll fly in. Or what I can do is what's considered a custom animation. Notice when I do that, that a custom animation dialog box shows up. And I'm going to close this clip art one because I'm done with that and I'd like the screen to be larger. So now what happens is when this custom animation dialog box comes up, I select an item and then what I do is I click where it says add an effect. You can add an entrance effect. That's how it comes onto the page. And then you can mouse over these and see. So if I do blinds, that's what it's going to look like. You can do an emphasis effect, which means it's going to add some emphasis to that once it's on the slide. Notice it's yellow, so green is when it comes on or it's going. Yellow is once it's there. I bet you can't guess what exit will do. <laughs> um, emphasis is going to grow or shrink that object. So it's going to grow up, grow so it looks larger. Exit, which is red, is how it's going to leave the screen. And I can go to more effects and look at I can see all these different effects in the dialog box. And it, what I do want you to notice is they've categorized them for us. So we have basic effects, subtle. Subtle would mean that it's small. We're not going to see it. It's kind of quiet. Moderate's in the middle. And exciting is just that. Those will be the ones you guys really like. So that's going to be a really exciting one. Okay. What I do want you to notice is as I added these different effects, next to that object I've got a number one, a number two, and a number three. So it's telling me the number of animations or effects that I've added to this section of my slide. And then what I want you to notice is over here it tells me the order. So my entrance happens first, my emphasis happens second, and my exit happens third. If you'd like to reorder them, you can select it. I don't know why you'd want the exit first, but I can reorder that and move that one up. So it happens first. 
You can also change when that item happens. So if I want this first effect to happen on a mouse click, I leave it on a mouse click. If I want the second one to happen with the previous one, it'll happen at the same time. Or if I want the next one to happen after the previous one, I can click that. So now if we click play, we should see our transition, we should see our exit, our entrance, and then our emphasis. And what I want you to notice is they're giving you a timeline so that you can see those happening, okay? So you're going to play around with these. You can also change the speed of many of the items. Depending on what you've chosen, you can decide what that's going to look like. The last thing I want to show you is probably my favorite, but again, use it sparingly. So I'm just going to go to, actually I'm going to go to the third slide. If I select an object, you have to select an object before the custom animation dialog box will be available to you. The last thing you can do is you can add a motion path. So if I wanted something to move around my screen, that's called a motion path. It's, it's kind of like connect the dots almost. So let's say that I just want this picture to move to the left. Notice it's moving. And then once it's done, I can choose where this starts and where this ends. So I can make it really long. Oops. I can make it really long. And then I can have it end all the way over on the other side of the screen. So now if we play this or we preview it, my picture moves across the screen. What you can also do, I'm going to remove this one because I want to delete it. What I can also do, I have to select the object, is I can add a custom path. So I can do a line or a curve or a scribble. So if I wanted to say, with an object. I can draw my name very sloppily in cursive and then look how my picture moves. Now again, it's super cool, but you want to use it sparingly and you want to use it to add emphasis to your slide. So if I remove this one more time, what I might want to happen is if I have a clip art that's a car, I can have it drive across the screen to get someone's attention. Or I can take this item and if I wanted it to move from all four corners because I, because I had information in all four corners, I could do that. So I could have it start here, go up to the corner, or I'll remove that one one more time. I select the object. I could actually just draw a scribble and I could draw it from one corner to the next, to the next, to the next, and I'm going to have this go back to where it started. It goes from all four corners, and then I can change the speed if I want to so it's slow or very slow so that it moves at a different speed. You guys are super clever and creative. You're going to come up with great ways to use these, and I know that you're going to take my advice, and you're going to use them sparingly so that you get your audience's attention. Good luck with PowerPoint.